this is the Paper Knits podcast, episode two. I want to say such a big thank you to everybody who watched my first <laughs> my first one. I was uh, the word I used to my husband was flabbergasted. I appreciated everybody who watched, and there are so many people who took time to comment. And truly, thank you. I was just overwhelmed by so many kind comments from people and so much understanding from people about like I, I think I knew that knitters other crafters would like appreciate how important something like my knitting could be when going through grief um and so I really appreciated hearing other people kind of affirm that I guess um but yeah people just had such kind responses to me talking about my daughter and I really appreciate it <laughs> um for the you know vast majority of people like that we know in real life have responded very kindly and respectfully um but we've had a handful of um maybe not as helpful comments or responses or people just like who haven't reached out to us at all which it just is what it is um, but yeah, to have so many strangers <laughs> just speak so kindly and share their own, my cat, my cat is doing gymnastics in the other room. To have so many people reach out, take the time to say something very kind and supportive, um, to share their own stories of loss and kind of affirmed that you know knitting or another craft also was very um, important to them as they were getting through that um, that time and yeah it was just it was really remarkable and thank you so if you're back here again for episode two thanks for returning and uh, yeah I really appreciated all all the support so thanks um big news today is my finished object <laughs> very proud of my my cardigan this is the um, stone crop cardi by Andrea Mowry this has been a long-term project for me or it's been in the works for a long time I've been planning this project for a long time and cutting it open and trying it on for the first time and it being exactly what I wanted it to be was really exciting I'm happy with the fit um, you know, one of the things about making our own clothes, in theory, is that we can make them be whatever we want them to be and make them fit however we want to fit. And having a, like, crew neck cardigan that buttons and doesn't pull and that also fits me in the arms and, like, gives me range of motion. It's like, has this ever occurred for me before? I'm not sure. So I am so happy with how it turned out. Um, cutting the steak open and then getting to try it on for the first time and it fitting the way I wanted it to was very thrilling and uh, yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out so last time I had a sleeve to go and then the button bands and neckband and the steak and the buttons and whatever and um, yeah I zoomed through the rest of that uh, pretty quickly and yeah I'm really I'm really happy with it so it's uh, knit with Briggs and Little Sport uh, navy blue and then the color work is spin cycle dyed in the wool in the color wallflower and yeah I really happy with how the color transitions worked out I love how it contrasts with the navy blue basically everything I own is blue or purple um, so that fits with me nicely I guess um, I said last time that I wanted to have a pink dress to wear underneath with a collar so this is my um, first iteration of that I guess with a shirt dress that I already had um, which also happens to have buttons up the front and buttons down the back and then there's 12 buttons on my cardigan <laughs> so it's like maybe a little bit too many buttons but that's okay I also have definitely misbuttoned the cardigan a few times there's a lot there to keep track of um, but that's okay. I do prefer it buttoned when I when wearing it open it tends to kind of fall off the shoulders as that is 
very common happens with like a yoke cardigan um, there's not like enough structure to it to kind of like hang on your shoulders properly but um, that's okay I like it buttoned and it fits me buttoned which is doesn't happen very often so um, yes I'm very I'm very happy about it um, so yeah I finished the sleeve I knit the button bands before I steeped it I guess the neck the neck band and the button band before I steeped it and then I also blocked it before I steeped it and so it was kind of all ready to go and um, I initially tried doing the crochet reinforcement for the steek and it just was looking bulky and like didn't love it. Um, one of my previous steek projects, a shawl actually, uh, a colorwork shawl, it was steeked and I did the crochet reinforcement too tight. And so then when I went to like, you know, ah, oh, I unfolded this and it was like cinched funny on the edges and I couldn't, you know, block it out and Anyways, it didn't, it was an unfortunate occurrence there. Um, and so I was trying to like do this like loose crochet reinforcement up the, up the center, but that was looking sloppy and I, I didn't try very hard. I like, I tried for four minutes and I was like, nope, we're not doing this. And so I sewed it on my sewing machine. And so I like marked the center stitch and then just did a zigzag stitch, um, down both sides of that. And yeah, it's. I'm not worried about it going anywhere. And I've sewed a ribbon over the steek edge on just the one side because I never got around to doing the other side um, but I really like that touch and yeah I used my sewing machine as well to sew on all 12 buttons because I was not excited about trying to do that by hand I don't enjoy sewing buttons um, and yeah I'm really excited about it so I wanted to be able to wear this to the gathering threads festival here in Edmonton and was a little bit worried at first because the weather was supposed to be quite hot that day. This is a very warm sweater. It's fingering weight, but it's wooly and it's very warm, uh, but ended up being kind of drizzly and cool that day. So that was just fine. Um, today, it is very hot outside. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be like, uh, I don't know, maybe like 25 to get today. And I'm downstairs in my basement where it's cool but also I was like wearing my sweater as I was like setting up all my stuff and like, oh, I had to go upstairs and grab something and carry all my stuff downstairs. And like, I'm, I'm warm. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, so not sure how much use I'm going to get out of this item now heading into summer and apparently a hot summer because we've already had like way too hot of weather, but I'm excited to wear it as much as I can in the fall. Um, so, uh, yeah, the Gathering Threads Festival, uh, which used to be called the Edmonton Fiber Frolic, and that was uh, the first weekend in May. And so, yeah, they had lots of different events. Uh, there was like a fashion show on the Friday night, and uh, like VIP shopping, and Saturday the vendor hall was open to everybody. They had workshops all day long. Um, there was a maker's night Saturday evening, and then um, the vendor hall open again on Sunday and so I was actually volunteering um, at the festival and I had signed up for some shifts on Saturday evening and didn't necessarily plan <laughs> my schedule very well uh, mm. the vendor hall was open till 4 and then my volunteer shift started at 5 I I got there at like 3 15 on Saturday because I was like okay I'll do like a you know zoom around the vendor hall and then um, just like go find some food and then I'll come back for my um, my shift at five but it was like very um, quiet by <laughs> by 3 15 45 minutes before it closed 
Um, so I did a little loop around and uh, yeah, here's my um, here's my montage of um, uh, the things that I filmed while I was there. That was all I did. <laughs> I don't know how I don't know how people film things when they're in public because I don't want anybody to look at me ever and then walking around recording things it's like not for me. <laughs> so this I took this video like at 3:58 and it closed at 4, right? So um, the least amount of people possible. <laughs> I did not walk around. I stood still in a corner. <laughs> I took a little bit of a video. So, yeah, I, there's this, uh, she's like a, a parenting expert, whatever, that I follow on Instagram. And she films so much of her content walking down the street, holding her phone in her face, talking about whatever, children's tantrums, how to deal with bedtime struggles. But she lives in New York, and I think probably... You can do anything you want while walking down the the walking down the sidewalk in New York, and like nobody will look at you because nobody cares. Um, probably nobody cares either <laughs> at the Gathering Threads Festival, but I that's all I could manage. I'll I'll work on my my content creation, right? Um, anyways, I also did not have any. I didn't I didn't buy hardly anything at all. Um, I am on a yarn fast right now trying to be um because i'm anticipating buying quite a bit of yarn when i go to the farmer's daughter retreat in next month um i want to be able to buy um yes i want to feel more free to buy some things there and so i didn't need to buy anything i have a lot of yarn i yes i i normally buy quite a bit at these local festivals it's fun to see things in person Mostly I, yeah, or just like a variety of different, um, different vendors that you wouldn't see very often or getting to see some, you know, products that I'd only seen online before and then getting to see them in person and touch them. Like, that's so fun. And, um, so I usually do that a lot at these festivals, but this time I didn't, which is fine. So I did buy a couple of things, but they're just little. Um, and so, um, one of them was some little garment tags from Maple and Rose. Um, so they're like faux leather uh, little tags that just say handmade on them, a little ball of yarn. So those are super cute. Um, I like to add a little tag. I've got a variety of them, but I just like these ones. So, And then I bought, <laughs> I bought a sticker um, from Nest Embroidery, um, which will be going onto my iPad case. Let me show you. I, uh... I have a ver actually I don't know if it's gonna fit my iPad case also broke and uh, but all my stickers are on it and so it's like not doing the best job in the world of actually protecting my iPad but I don't want to lose my stickers so maybe I'll save the what the duck for um, my new iPad case but and then oh yeah so what I one of the things I was excited about um, doing was going to see Jolene from Jolene knits a lot um, she's another Edmonton knitter podcaster and uh she made a 3d printed sock machine and she was doing like a little demo of it and so i like beelined to chat with her when i first got there because i wanted to make sure to catch her before you know she was packing up and so i, I should have been on that but i didn't um but she has a really cool video well, a couple of videos of her the process of like making putting together the 3d sock machine 3D printed sock machine and then how to use it and everything and I think it's really cool. Um, I might recruit my brother to make one for me because he has a 3D printer and I just think it would be fun to experiment with that. I used to have a flatbed knitting machine um, but it had two beds and so you could actually knit tubes on it and I have knit a couple pairs of socks with it. The learning curve was very steep and it stopped being fun and it took up a lot of space and so I sold it. But 
a smaller, lighter, purpose-built sock machine might be might be working out for me. So we'll see. Anyways, I Jolene was giving out little uh, um, progress keepers. So I've got that. I thought I bought something else, but I can't remember now. I had ordered some more needles from the Yarn Divas and they brought them to the show for me to pick up. So that was handy. I needed some more. I needed. I wanted some more, I guess. I, uh, yeah. Anyways, whatever. And then this is, this is something I was excited about. Wasn't planning to buy it, but once I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I need that for sure. Um, so it's called Sheep, Shepherd, and Land. Stories of Sheep Farmers Reinvigorating Canadian Wool. So the author, Anna Hunter, um, she, I've been following her on Instagram for a long time. Um, she's very fascinating to me. Um, she used to own a yarn store and then I don't know the full what and how and whatever, but she now owns a um, fiber mill and her own sheep in Manitoba um, called Longway Homestead. And um, yeah, she's just like on a mission to kind of um, bring that like value back to wool in Canada, Canadian grown, Canadian processed wool. And um, yeah, I just think it's super interesting. So this, um, this book shares different stories of um, sheep producers across Canada. Um, one of them is here in Alberta. Actually, I think there was there were a couple in Alberta. Um, Providence Lane Homestead. And um, they also, I, yeah, I'm hoping to go, be able to go and visit them one day. They're in, like, closer to southern Alberta. I, I really appreciate the value of, like, Canadian grown, Canadian processed products. And I want to be able to support that however I can. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to, to read more about that, I guess, in, in this book. So, I'll, I'll keep you posted, I guess, about how it is. But so yeah, that's everything that I bought at Gathering Threads. Not a super exciting haul <laughs> to be able to share, um, but that's okay. Um, if anybody is local here and went to the festival, let me know how it was. If you did a workshop or went to the Maker's Night or anything. I saw Kate Atherley. I didn't, uh, I didn't do any workshops or anything, um, but she was finishing up a workshop just as I was like starting my volunteer shift. Kate Atherley is very, um, she's just like, I find her very wise. <laughs> and uh, so I was kind of, kind of gonna like try and catch her eye <laughs> and say hi. Uh, it's funny, it's like, um, she's a knitting celebrity to me. Um, so <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, that was that. Um, so because I was gonna be there um, volunteering for a few hours and I was like, I was at the, um, like a welcome booth and the yarn winding station. It's like, I needed something to knit on while I was sitting there. And so I, I cast on a muscle borough hat and um, at home and got to like through the increases so that I could just like knit round and round while I was um, sitting at the festival. So this is a toque pattern by Isolde Teague and I loved the idea of not having to swatch um, before starting a project. <laughs> and so you just like cast on at the top of the hat and then increase out and then measure your gauge and then figure out how many increases you need to do. Knit a big long tube and then decrease again to the end and then it kind of like flips into itself and you get like a double thick toque. And um, yeah, I bought a random skein of yarn from um, my local yarn shop, the Fiber Nook, um, like a few weeks ago, kind of with the intention of making one of these. Um, so it's knit with the Fiber Co. Cumbria Fingering, um, which is Masham, Merino, and Mohair. It's like soft and also toothy, and I feel like will be a very nice warm hat. Um, the color's called Black Beck, and it's just this really interesting how much that'll show up. Green, black, kind of like a mallard 
duck green kind of color. It just like it hits the light differently. You can see the mohair in it, um, like was it took the dye a little bit differently, and it adds a little bit of a halo. And anyway, that's very nice. I um, am like quite sure though <laughs> that it's not gonna fit me. <laughs> it's gonna be too big. I um, can see very distinctly where I. When I finished my decreases, or my, sorry, when I finished my increases is also, I had been knitting with Magic Loop, doing the, that part, and then I switched to a circular, and I can tell that my gauge changed, and it's much tighter in the part where I was using Magic Loop, for whatever reason, and uh, it's definitely loosened up. And so I had actually ripped back and added a few more increases because I was worried that it was going to be too small, and... Yeah, I haven't put it on to waste yarn to like actually try it on because it's, oh, it's looking so giant. Oh my gosh, look at that. Because it's double thick, I feel like that'll make it feel a little bit snugger. So I keep dropping the stitches here. Um, anyways, we'll see. It's it, like, whatever. It doesn't matter. It was a good, I zoomed through it while I was um, sitting at my table and it's just chill, just knit round and round in a circle um yes I am happy to give this to somebody who it will fit and then I will make myself another one so anyways that's been that was a nice um mindless project to be to be working on um that weekend oh this is I wanted to talk about this too because I really love this company um this is a little bag from her leather co they're in Calgary um and they just like I just adore their products I have a couple of her of her bags um, so she was actually at the at gathering threads as well um, so anyways I just think that's so cute I'm like getting it's it I need a bigger bag now <laughs> it's not fitting super well but this is like perfect for a sock um, the hat is growing and so it's not fitting as well but anyways I just love it it's so cute um, okay I Whenever I finish a big project like this, I always feel like I'm in a little bit of like limbo land of trying to decide what I'm going to do next. I had, like I knew that I wanted to do, I needed something simple to knit at the festival. And so I had that. Um, I haven't touched my birds of a feather shawl. I still have, this is, I still need to reclaim this yarn so that I can keep knitting on that. Um, and yeah, I just like always feel a little bit like, I don't know what I'm doing in between projects. And I kind of had it in my head that I wanted to knit something for summer. And because I'm trying to not buy yarn right now, I wanted to do something from my stash and had a couple projects that I'd like bought patterns for, but they were fingering weight. It was like 26 stitches gauge. Like that's a lot of knitting. <laughs> And because I'm going to this um, knitting retreat in like a month from now, I wanted to have something complete by then, right? And so I did not want to commit to a fingering weight 26 stitch gauge project. Um, and I settled on a DK weight project, which is maybe a little bit heavy for summer, but whatever. Um, it is knit with um, ancient arts nettle sock DK and the nettle fiber in it is kind of like similar to linen and it's more breathable um, like better for summer kind of thing but it also is like mostly more like it's 80 let's see I think it's 80% merino 20% nettle something like that 68% merino 32% nettle so yeah a little bit more nettle but Anyways, um, I decided to cast something on. I had a couple, a handful of skeins of this that I got, again, from a D-stash, which was fun. Ancient Arts is my favorite yarn company. I have a lot of their yarn. I, um, I love them. <laughs> I say that if I could only buy yarn from one company ever again, it would be theirs. They have just, like wonderful color sense they have a million colors they have so many different bases they're expanding their bases um yes i love them and they're from calgary um so anyways 
I had bought these on a D-stash because I saw somebody was selling them and I was like, yes, please, I will buy all of that. Um, anyways, I almost cast on without swatching and I was like, oh, I just told the internet that swatching this way is so easy. So now I can swatch. So I did my swatch with Patty Lyons swatching in the round hack and it's so pretty and I got gauge the first time which literally never happens um so that helps when you I guess in theory that means that if I had just cast on then it would have been fine but instead I'm just gonna pretend that's not true and I'm gonna feel proud of myself for doing what you're supposed to do and knit a swatch um anyways it's it's nice to kind of feel the fabric and stuff too I've knit with this yarn before but um anyways I am making, I should say, it's called The Clark Pullover by Jane Richmond. And it's a um, top down raglan. The pattern is knit for full sleeves. I'm just going to do a short sleeve. It's stripes. I don't have, I didn't have enough to just do one solid color. So I was looking for something with stripes. And um, I don't have enough yarn in theory. The yardages listed on the pattern are for the full length sleeve. So I'm not doing that. I can make it a little bit shorter if I need to. Anyways, the main color is this one. It's called Irish Linen. And then I have these two, which are both blue. And I might alternate the colors. I don't know if they're different enough to like, if it'll look intentional that they're different, you know, or if it'll just look like I made a mistake. I haven't decided yet. Um, sometimes I watch knitting podcasters and they're like, oh yeah, I'm doing a top down raglan and like, oh, you know, I don't even need a pattern. I can just knit until it fits. Like I have a really difficult time wrapping my head around raglan patterns. I, this one is interesting. You cast on for the back neck and then, um, and then join in the round at the front and then start knitting in the round. Um, but I, I just have such a difficult time keeping track of like, what is the sleeve? What are my sleeve increases? What is the body increases? Um, I don't, I don't know why exactly. So when <laughs> people say like, oh yeah, just, you know, just know my raglan, you know, what I normally do. And I can just knit that without a pattern. I'm like, well, I don't understand. Um, but, but I've only knit like maybe two raglan patterns before so maybe once I finish this raglan pattern then I will be feel like an expert at how to knit a raglan um but so far that is not the case and the last, the last one I did I even like labeled my stitch markers so that I could figure out where I was knitting like okay this is now the sleeve that I am knitting this is the back this is the front I don't know why it's just it's very difficult for me to keep track of it so Anyways, I'm hoping that this will be a nice, quick, enjoyable knit for me. I have uh, like a bit less than a month to finish it before I go to Montana. So um, that's my plan. Um, the other thing that I've been working on is a um, knit quilt that I apparently started two years ago. I went back and double checked when I made the um, project page on Ravelry and it was two years ago March so um, <laughs> which is sad I had decided two years ago that I wanted to make um, I was like, I'm gonna learn how to cable better I'm gonna knit a cable blanket um, so it's called uh, Nora's vintage card oh, no Nora's <laughs> Nora's vintage Afghan and it has 20 separate blocks that are all different cable patterns and then you see them together. So I was like, okay, great. Just like a little, you know, just one thing to work on at a time. I can just do it over the course of a long time. I bought some of the yarn that I needed, but I was like, I'll buy more later instead of just like buying it all at once, knowing that I like wouldn't use it. Obviously it's been two years. I um, just have now used up that stuff that I had bought two years ago because I kept working on this project. But um Part of what prompted me to start working on it again is that the yarn that I'm using is from River City Yarns. Called, it's their Epic Yarn, but River City Yarns has now closed their online store. Um, they're not going to be 
making this yarn anymore. <laughs> so I was like, okay, like either I need to pivot and find another yarn substitute or I need to buy the rest that I need. And so that's what I did. Um, I am, I'm so sad though. Like I, that's one of my very favorite yarns and I, I bought a couple sweater quantities of it when, um, when they were closing. Um, my very favorite sweater that I knit, um, I just knit it in the last couple months, but I love it. It's with their yarn. Um, I knit my husband a couple sweaters with it. Um, so I'm sad that it's, that it's going to be gone. So I've got lots of it now <laughs> to keep knitting with, but then once it's gone, it's gone apparently. So anyways, I, yeah, I bought what I needed to while I still could to finish off the blanket. And then I kind of got it in my head that I wanted to finish this blanket this year prior to December 19th, when is my, my daughter's, what would have been my daughter's first birthday. Um, there's no really rhyme or reason to that. This wasn't a blanket that was supposed to be for her. Um, I just decided that I wanted a project to work on. Um, to have finished by that time, I had planned to work on this on sort of the, the 19th of every month was my plan. Um, kind of as a way to mark that day as, you know, in the alternate timeline um, where my daughter didn't die, I would have been taking cute little like four month picture and the seven month picture on the, on the 19th of every month, which I did uh, with my boys. Um, and I wanted something to kind of mark the day for myself. That was just for me. And um, yeah, decided that I wanted to like, oh, this will be a good thing I can work on. Um, there's obviously there's tw like I said, there's 20 blocks to do. I had knit two. <laughs> um, so like the math doesn't quite math. Um, there to like have this finished in the next uh, seven months. I need to like make a plan about like how many blocks do I need to knit per, knit per month? Which ones are going to take longer? Some of them are more intricate cable patterns than others. Um, so anyways, um, let me show you what I have done and then what I worked on this week. Okay, so I, oops, um, these are the two that I worked on first. I think that this one, ouch, oh, frick. <laughs> oh, ugh, that blocking pin is poked right through that mat. Ow, okay. I am trying to remember which one I did first. I think that this is the first one I did. For some reason, this is the second one I picked. It was very complicated and uh took a long time oh that hurt i like it's not bleeding but it's it might be just bleeding a little bit Ooh. anyways i put they're not washed i put them out on the blocking mat to see how big they were gonna be anyways they're supposed to be 12 by 12 inches um this one i need to redo the bind off edge because it's too tight um one of the things about this yarn is that um, so this is really, I can't remember now what the color of this yarn is called, but you can't buy it anymore. So maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but it's this like lovely, rich, purpley color. Um, but it like, it rubs off on my fingers. It like, um, the dye is not all the way set, I guess, whatever fixed. Um, and so I need to experiment with these when I block them to I might I think what I'm thinking right now if anybody has any suggestions let me know um what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to give it a rinse and then I'm going to give it a wash with some vinegar to try and set that and then let that dry and then wash it again and see if it's still bleeding because one of my other colors is like a light camel color and like I'm planning to you know wash and block all the swatches before I before I um, seam them together. But like I have small kids and a cat, I'm gonna need to wash this blanket someday. And if I can't wash it because it's gonna bleed, 
then that'll be a problem. So, um, anyways, if anybody has encountered something similar before and you found a way to get around that, let me know. Anyways, these were the two that I had finished two years ago. This one I had partially finished and finished it this past week. Um, and I think there's actually one more purple one to go still, but I was getting tired of having purple hands and so I picked a different one. Um, this is the block that I just, I just finished it um, yesterday. Um, so yeah, I, this one was a very quick knit. It hardly has any cables on it, right? It's mostly ribbing. And so it went very, very quick. Um, I, yeah, need to kind of like make a plan. A couple of the people who have knit this before have really lovely project pages that show what all the blocks look like. Um, the pattern itself doesn't. It has the like picture of the whole blanket, but it's like styled, right? You can't see it exactly. Um, and then it has the charts, but like it's hard for me to look at the the cable chart and then be able to translate what that actually looks like. And so a couple people in their project pages have it like, you know, them very nicely labeled. And so I've been going and like kind of double checking um, what the what the end block is going to look like. So anyways, um, yeah, that's just felt like a special project for me to be working on. I guess we'll see how my cabling motivation goes over the next few months. I actually have, I, you know, I planned this project two years ago so that I could practice my cabling, but then it turns out I've been doing other projects since that had cables in them and like I've gotten better at doing cables. And so, which has helped. It's like made those last couple of blocks more enjoyable. Um, not having to stop every time and figure out which way, I still have to a little bit figure out which way the cable is supposed to cross, but I'm doing a better job of remembering I hold those stitches in front or do I hold them in back um, and I think one of them I had to like ladder back a bit and fix one of them um, which is always daunting um, but if there's a mistake or two also a miscrossed cable like it doesn't really matter um, so anyways yes those are the things I've been working on a little bit scattered variety of projects um, I cast on the Clark Pullover um, on Mother's Day, and which felt like a bit of a complicated day for me. Um, but it was nice to have something that just was something to focus on and be excited about creating. Um, I put on a playlist of um, songs that I listen to when I'm sad and uh, sat outside and cast on my sweater and yeah it was good to have something that was kind of just for me um, my my kids had cute little cards for me and yeah ended up being an okay day um, a lot of people have said that like the anticipation of some of those days is worse than the day itself. But then also, like, are we just supposed to like not anticipate those days? Or does it just mean to like, probably it means to like have some compassion for yourself when you're like feeling anxious about those, like lead up to those kind of significant days. Um, we made a plan about how we were going to spend the day knowing that it would be difficult. And I had recruited one of my friends to um, touch base with my other friends to kind of say like, I was, I didn't want people to feel worried about reaching out on Mother's Day. I wanted them to reach out, but I didn't know how to communicate that. So my friend <laughs> communicated that for me, which I appreciate. Um, I wanted to share a a poem not that I wrote um, but I have it hanging in my knitting space here and I read it every time I wind yarn um, I have a couple of her poems hung around my house and 
yeah this one I just especially love um so it's uh by Kate Bear from her book what kind of woman um every one of her poems I, I'm not like smart at poetry um But yes, every one of her her poems, she she writes a lot about motherhood, um, and they just all resonate. This one's called Motherload. Um, so let me attempt to um, let me attempt to read this. She keeps an office in her sternum, the flat bone in the center of her chest, with all its urgent papers, vast appointments, lists of minor things. In her vertebrae, she holds more carnal tasks. Milk jugs, rotten plants, heavy-bottomed toddlers in all their mortal rage. She keeps frustration in her halix. Senseless chatter, jealous fangs, the spikes of a dinosaur's tail. The belly is more complicated, all heartache and ambition, fires and tidal waves. In her pelvis, she holds her labors, long and slippery. In her clavicle, silent things, money and power, safety and choice, tiny banquets of shame. In her hands, she carries their egos, small and flimsy. In her mouth, she holds their laughter, gentle currents, a cosmos of everything. Yeah, I just feel like it, it captures the weight of motherhood for me. Um, so I wanted to share that. And send my love to everybody who feels, who has complicated feelings on Mother's Day. There's a wide variety of reasons for Mother's Day to feel complicated. And um, I'm glad that there's more talk about that than um, probably ever has been before. And uh, yeah, if that was a complicated day for you, same. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's, everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, thanks for joining me again. Appreciate ya. Um, you know, like and subscribe. Um, and find me on Instagram at paper.knits and Ravelry at um, This Is Paper Knits. And yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining me again. Okay, happy knitting. <laughs>